Saucer Congri is a majestic mountain located within the eastern Karakoram range in the Ladakh region of India, reaching an altitude of 7,672 meters at its summit, protruding prominently from the web of sluice glacial flow valleys that surround its slanted slopes. Saucer Congri was first noted within the mountaineering community in the year 1909 by none other than the OG of high altitude mountaineering himself, a man named Tom George Longstaff, who had notably made the first recorded ascent of a peak over 7,000 meters in elevation two years prior in 1907, when he ascended the 7,120 meter peak, Trisul. Tom George Longstaff would also attempt an ascent of Saucer Congre during his initial visit to the peak. However, despite his best efforts, he was only able to reach an altitude of approximately 18,000 feet before he was forced to retreat. In the years following Tom George Longstaff's initial summit attempt, Saucer Congre soon began to attract the attention of several other ambitious mountaineers who were seeking to accomplish a challenging first ascent. Notably, due to fierce seasonal flooding occurring in the Shyok River at the foot of Saucer Congre's eastern face, along the remote, unpopulated Tibetan Plateau, Saucer Congre's early summit hopefuls largely wrote an ascent of the peak from the east off as an impossibility, and would instead attempt to ascend the peak via its western face along the Nubra Valley, which, when compared to its eastern side, was not only easier to reach for the climbers, but also it was significantly easier for expeditions to make arrangements for the delivery of supplies from the western side, as the Nubra Valley is populated by a few small local communities. Many of these early expedition parties also theorized that the western face might actually be the best route to ascend the peak anyways, which, from a distance at least, appeared as simple as following one of Saucer Congre's lower branching ridges up to the summit ridge, and from there it seemed to be a simple matter of following the summit ridge up to the peak summit. However, expedition party after expedition party would come to realize that in all actuality it wasn't such a cut and dry affair when they actually attempted to ascend the mountain, as the steep terrain, crevasse-riddled glaciers, and the multitude of highly technical mixed rock and ice climbing pitches along Saucer Congre's western face that must be overcome to reach the summit proved to be too great a challenge for a multitude of mountaineers over the following decades, as the peak would remain unclimbed until 1973 a span of 64 years between first attempt and first ascent. The first successful ascent of Saucer Congre in 1973 was accomplished by an Indo-Tibetan border police-led expedition team, who, through no small effort, trekking across 375 miles on their journey just to establish their base camp, made their historic ascent via the southeastern face of the peak, instead of the oft-attempted western face. This expedition team's immense efforts to even make the attempt from another face paid off big for the team, as they would be rewarded with significantly less technical and strenuous climbing conditions along the ascent route from the southeastern face and reach the summit successfully on June 5th, 1973. Notably, however, the western face of Saucer Congre wouldn't finally be successfully ascended for an additional 14 years, when it was finally accomplished by an Indo-British expedition team in the year 1987. In the years following the first successful ascent of the peak, Saucer Congre faded from the forefront of high-altitude mountaineering, as most mountaineers began to shift their attention elsewhere to other unclimbed 7,000ers to conquer, and Saucer Congre's reputation within the greater mountaineering community waned as the peak faded into relative obscurity. So much so, in fact, that in 1995, 
one of the deadliest mountaineering disasters ever at the time of its occurrence, would go largely unnoticed, not just by the mainstream media, whose lack of coverage might have been partially due to the tragedy that occurred on the infamous K2 the same year, a topic I made a video about if you'd like to know more about that, but also within the mountaineering community as well. In the summer of 1995, a 44-member Indian Border Security Force expedition team prepared their gear for an ascent of Saucer Congri and departed India's capital city of Delhi en route to the peak on July 6th, beginning their long journey from the sprawling metropolis to the remote valleys at the foot of Saucer Congri. The team would be approaching the peak from the Nubra Valley meaning that they would be attempting to ascend the peak via its infamously difficult western face, and the team had reached the foot of the mountain by early August, quickly setting to work establishing their base camp. Upon establishing their base camp, the large expedition team wasted no further time and began setting their ropes and establishing their lower camps along their route, spending the following few weeks hauling gear to the aforementioned camps, while also acclimatizing to the altitude during the process of doing so. Throughout the month of August, the team continued to make good progress up the mountain, and on August 25th, the team reached their planned location for the expedition's high camp, Camp 4, and established their camp there the very same day. Following the establishment of Camp 4, the team of eager and able climbers began to prepare to mount a push for the summit over the following few days, as 13 of the expedition team's ranking officers, including the team's leader, a man named Vikas Chandra, gathered together at Camp 4 to prepare for their summit push, which ideally would take place the next day. However, the following day, on August 26th, Saucer Congri was enveloped by a powerful storm system, which lashed against the climbers, assembled high on the mountain slopes tents with unrelenting ferocity throughout the entirety of August 26th. The following morning, on August 27th, the team awoke after an uncomfortable, chilly night spent in their tents at Camp 4, and emerged to find that the weather conditions had improved since the previous day. However, visibility conditions were still poor, with near whiteout conditions due to the swirling spin drifts caused by the whipping winds. Furthermore, the clouds obfuscating the sun showed no signs of breaking in the near future, with plenty of fresh snow falling from above, which had begun to accumulate as a new layer of powder snow on Saucer Congre's slopes. After inspecting the weather and the conditions on the mountain at Camp 4 for a while, the team's leader, Vikas Chandra, came to the conclusion that the conditions on the mountain were not only far from ideal for a push for the summit, but also posed a potential danger to both his men and himself if they remained at Camp 4 and decided to issue the order to the climbers to retreat back to Camp 3, and shortly thereafter, he established radio contact with base camp to inform them of the high camp team's descent. Vikas led the dozen other officers as they trudged forwards through the deep, fresh snow in near whiteout conditions, as they slowly descended towards Camp 3. Suddenly, while they made their way, through the thick snow, the 13 men heard an unmistakable loud crack, followed by an ominous deep rumbling as a large serac looming above the men broke loose from the mountainside, plummeting into the thick blanket of fresh snow that had just been deposited on the slopes of Saucer Congri, triggering a massive avalanche that began to sweep down the face of the peak with increasing velocity and ferocity. The enormous and immensely powerful avalanche swept up the 13 men in its unrelenting flow of snow and debris, carrying the men down the mountain slopes and burying them 
in tombs of snow and ice, deep within the avalanche's debris field. The powerful, sweeping avalanche had drawn the attention of the remaining members of the expedition team who attempted to establish radio contact with Vikas and his team of potential summit hopefuls over the following few minutes. However, after receiving no response, after several attempts to contact the climbers, the team members at base camp began to scour the debris field in an effort to locate their comrades, and also made contact with the Indian Army, informing them of the dire situation at Saucer Congri. However, the expedition team members searching the debris field spent the next few hours inspecting the huge and twisted mass of ice and snow to no avail, and by sundown, they had failed to locate any trace of the missing men. The following day, on August 28th, an Indian Army helicopter was dispatched, along with a boots-on-the-ground search team to help assist the BSF expedition party in locating their missing team members. The helicopter would prove to be a great boon to their efforts, as it was able to spot several items belonging to the missing men from above, which in turn helped the team on the ground establish a more concentrated search radius. By the evening of August 28, 1995, the search teams had located eight of the 13 missing men and declared an end to the recovery efforts, as the remaining five men had surely perished by this point and the risks posed to the search team scouring the debris field outweighed the potential of finding the remaining men's remains. In honor of the 13 mountaineers who lost their lives on August 27, 1995, the Border Security Force sponsors a gathering in the village of Ponameek. This community gathering is held every year on the anniversary of the avalanche, August 27th. The annual festivities not only celebrate the lives of the deceased mountaineers, but are also held as an act of gratitude towards the locals who had eagerly assisted the BSF and Indian Army search teams during their search and recovery operations. Thank you all for watching.